Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Hello, boys and girls. Our story today is Mr. Sunshine. Some time ago, a middle-aged man came to our town of Knotty Pine to live with his daughter and son-in-law. The man's name is Herman Webber. But very few of the citizens of our fair town call him Herman anymore. Instead, they call him Mr. Sunshine. He even gets mail addressed to Mr. Sunshine. One morning, after Herman Webber came to live with us, he stopped in at the pastor's study. Good morning, Herman. Ah, uh, good morning to you, Pastor. This is a beautiful day to be doing the Lord's work. Yes, indeed. Please come in. Oh, thank you. Have a seat. Uh, thank you. Herman, I marvel at the speed with which you've gone about doing your work for the Lord. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, 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 there is no secret to it, Pastor. I have planned this for years. You have? You see, all the while I've worked for the railroad, I dream of the day when I can work from sun up to sunset for the Lord. You see, I never earned a big salary, and I have to work hard to raise my family. But in the back of my mind, I always think of what I can do for the Lord after I retire, and no longer have to switch freight cars. Well, no wonder you go ahead with the Lord's work like a veteran. <laughs> Thank you. You see, I always dream of the time when I can do more than teach Sunday school class and go to church and uh, make big noise in the choir. <laughs> <laughs> make a noise in the choir. <laughs> yeah, that is what I call my singing. My voice, um, she is not so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, bless you, Herman. Oh, I have all the material that you ask for. Oh, that is wonderful. And here are the tracks. Oh, yeah, these are very fine, Pastor. I'm glad you like them. I tried to pick them out with your purpose in mind. Oh, they will work very well with what I'm doing. And here are the Sunday school papers that you asked me to get. Wonderful. Uh, there are many, and that's good, because I can use many at the orphanage. And here are the Bibles. Oh, thank you very much. Here are the paper-bound books. Oh, now I have everything to work with. Uh, there's still more. Here are the greeting cards that you ask for and the sundry supplies. <laughs> Maybe Herman's ambition is uh, bigger than his ability, huh? <laughs> I doubt that. But if you need help, now please, feel free to ask the church secretary to help you with your paperwork. Well, Pastor, you are a very kind man. You don't know how much I appreciate your help. I'm only glad to do it. Your efforts for the Lord have warmed my heart, and, well, I'm only glad to do all that I can to encourage you. Again, I say thank you. Well, I'd better wrap all this up and take it home. Let me drive you home, will you? You can't possibly carry all this. Oh, but I am prepared. I bring my grandson's wagon. Even so, it's a long walk. You know, for many years, all I do is ride. Now I walk. I like to walk and meet people. Stop and talk to them about my Lord. All right. Before you leave, let's have a word of prayer. Certainly. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this man who serves thee without thought for himself or time. Bless his goings and comings and make him a great time. Such a wonderful help here at the orphanage. Oh, thank you, Amy. I only come twice a week. You are the one that is doing the big job. Perhaps. But you take care of those spiritual needs. 
whereas I just look after their physical needs. The children look forward so much to the Bible story from the object lessons. In fact, they'd like to have you come every day. Oh, I wish I could. Maybe later on I can do that. I'm glad they like to have me come. Glad? Why, they're overjoyed when they see you turn in the gate. Do you know what they call you? Well, no. What do they call me? They call you Mr. Sunshine. Oh. Is that what they call me? Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, you put them up to it. Oh, no, Mr. Sunshine. The children thought of it on their own. They thought the name would show how much you do for them and mean to them. Just like Sunshine. Oh, those children have a way of thanking a person without saying it, haven't they? Yes, they sure do. Mr. Sunshine, you know something, Amy? I like it. Then if I get tired or discouraged, I'll think of that name. And it will pep me up fine. Just fine. Well, I must be running along. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Sunshine. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Herman. How are you today? Oh, I'm just fine. And uh, how are you, Doctor? Pretty good after having a rough night. Say, uh, there are several new patients in the surgical ward that you'd better see. They're doing very well. well I'm sure they'll need spiritual doctoring, too. Yeah, I will see them right away. Uh, how is uh, Mrs. McCarthy this morning? She's doing fine. You know, after you talked to her about God, she lost all of her fear. I'd say that that saved her life. Uh, how do you mean? She was relaxed and quiet when she went to surgery. She had faith that whatever was God's will was all right with her. You see, fear can kill in a dangerous operation because the patient doesn't cooperate with the surgeon. Thanks to you, Herman, she came through with flying colors. Now she has a new outlook on life. No more fear of anything. Oh, that is good. Well, I must get to work. Oh, just one more thing. Yeah, Doctor? I know that dealing with sick people isn't the easiest job in the world. But don't get discouraged. We need you here at the hospital. And the patients need you and God, regardless of what they say. I know that, Doctor. When they slap my face on one side, I turn the other. That is what the Lord did. Hello, Ranger. Oh, hello. You are uh, Bill Jefferson, aren't you? Yes. I thought so. Uh, my name's uh, Herman Weber. I see you in church Sunday, and uh, my daughter, uh, she points you out to me. I know you, too. You're Mr. Sunshine. Oh, how did you know that? <laughs> well, this is a big town, but the word gets around here like this was just a wide place in the road. Oh, now you, you are pulling my leg. <laughs> Uh, the pastor was telling me about you. I'm thrilled to hear the work you're doing for the Lord. Oh, it is really nothing. I keep myself busy doing his work. Mm, that's fine. Well, I have to run along. Uh, stop in at my office when you have time or over at my home. Thank you kindly. Say, uh, are you a Christian, Bill? Yes, I go to church. Well, does, that does not make you a Christian. Do you know the Lord as your personal Savior? Are you born again? Yes, Herman. I've known the Lord for many years. Oh, then my daughter was right. I've heard many things about you. Good things. Thank you. Say, by the way, I noticed as I came along that you were passing out tracks. Yeah, that is why I walk. I stop and talk to people and hand them a track. Sometimes I get the chance to talk more with them about the Lord. Sometimes they invite me to their home. They tell me all about their troubles, and and then I tell them how the Lord can help them. Oh, that's wonderful. The Lord's given each one of us a gift to use in our ministry for him. I'm pleased to see that yours is personal evangelism, Mr. Sunshine. Oh. 
Say, Herman, we don't have much business here for you today. Just one old harmless drunk sleeping it off. Velva, uh, come I speak to him. Well, sure, if you can wake him up. Go ahead. Oh, well, uh, thank you, deputy. I don't see how you can stand even getting close to that guy. He hasn't had a bath in weeks. You were right about him, deputy. He is still in stupor from too much drink. <laughs> well, sure. Could have saved you a trip. <laughs> oh, that is all right. I never mind a trip for nothing when it's for the Lord. Uh -huh. Well, whatever it is you're talking about is okay with me. I guess wasting your time on religion is as good a way to waste it as any. Oh, talking to men about their soul is never wasting time, deputy. If you don't mind, I'd like to um, leave these traps for you to read while you're watching the jail. Well, I sure ain't got nothing else to do but read. Hey, what's this stuff about, anyway? It's about Jesus and how he died on the cross to save all men from their sins. <laughs> That's a good one. I ain't no sinner. Oh, the Bible says all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I still say I ain't no sinner. And if you say I am, I'll lock you up or call me something I ain't. Well, I... <clears throat> I'll just leave this Bible with you so you can read it for yourself. I don't do no Bible reading or any other kind of religious reading. Now get out of here before I get mad and lock you up. Good morning, Mrs. Connors. Good morning, Herman. You know, those are beautiful flowers in your garden. Why, thank you. I, I am proud of them. Flowers always remind me of the Lord because they are so, so beautiful. You know, the Lord is referred to as the fairest of flowers. And then you think of how he died for our sins, which are so ugly. It makes him more beautiful. Anyone that can offer eternal life and salvation from sin is beautiful. Don't you think so, Mrs. Connors? Oh, is that all you ever think about, Herman? You ever heard of God being referred to as beautiful as a flower? I'm not interested in your religion. I'm a good woman and faithful in church. That's enough. Oh, that is fine, but it is not enough. The Bible says... I don't care one bit what the Bible says. Just because you helped get the doctor the day when Mr. Connors took sick and you did a few chores for me is no reason to pester me to death about religion. And if you don't stop pestering me, I'm going to take it up with the law. As you wish, Mrs. Connors. I still think your flowers are beautiful. Good morning to you, lady. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Connors. Nell Stitch, you should have come by an hour ago. Why, what happened? It's that Herman Weber again, talking religion and pestering folks to death, trying to get them saved, as he calls it. Oh, uh, look into it. I have a petition from the people of the Fourth Ward I'm circulating about streetlights. Uh, would you sign it, please? Yes, but I have more important things on my mind right now. It's about the orphanage. Well, what about the orphanage, Mrs. Oh, Connors? Oh, that Herman again. Land sakes, he's getting to be a regular pest around there. And I don't think it's good for the children. Don't tell me he gives them religion, too. He most certainly does, Mel Stitch. And as committeeman of this ward, it's your duty to see that he's stopped. Well, I'll look into it right away. What, what, what does Amy say about this religious pest? Oh, what does she know about it at her young age? She thinks he's doing something wonderful for the children. You've got to stop that man. Well, I'll take care of it, Mrs. Connors. I'll fix Herman's wagon, but quick. Bertha, this is Effie Connors. Oh, hello, Effie. How are things? Terrible, Bertha. That Herman, no, whatever his name is. I know what you mean, dear. He annoys me, too. He's always trying to cheer me up, and, and you know how sickly I am. I'm just not a well woman, and, and never will be. Oh, I know, dear. 
You must suffer terribly. I do. And that little man hops around with enough energy and well-feeling for six people like me. No wonder he can talk about religion, feeling as good as he does. I declare every bone in my body aches today. If he comes by this morning, I was sitting on the porch, and he says he hopes I'm feeling fine. That man has a morbid sense of humor. Well, you know, Bertha, he's getting pesty over at the orphanage now. You don't say. I'll have to speak to my George about that. That's really what I called you about. I wish you would speak to George about Herman and what's his name, especially since your George is on the board. I'll speak to him this evening, Effie. You can set your mind to rest on that. Thank you, dear. By the way, what does the doctor say is wrong with you? He says it's all in my mind, Effie. Imagine that, I do declare. The doctors nowadays just aren't what they used to be. Everyone says your doctor is so good. Oh, he's a nice enough man, but if he had my aches and pains, he wouldn't say it's in my mind. That's a shame for him to talk that way. Well, I must hang up. Don't forget to talk to your George. I'll talk to him. Goodbye, dear. Do call again. I will. Take care of yourself, and, and don't move around too fast. If I were you, I wouldn't bother with doctors at all. Goodbye. Hey, you, Herman. Well, you don't have to yell like that, mister. How glad we stopped at the mild voice. Do you know who I am? No, not yet, but... I will as soon as you tell me. I'm Melvin Stitch, committeeman for the Fourth Ward. Oh, how do you do? Glad to meet you. I can't say the same about you. Oh, is something wrong? Yes. I've been getting complaints about you pestering citizens in my ward about religion. I never pester anybody about religion, Mr. Stitch. I talk to them about the Lord when I can, but I never pester them. What are you trying to do? Make a liar out of my constituents? I'm not making a liar out of anybody. You'd better not be. Also, I want you to stay away from the orphanage. Are you also a police officer? No. But what's the difference? Well, then you better not tell me where I can go and where I cannot and what I can say and what I cannot say. Is that so? I'm the ward committeeman. And I'm an American citizen. And the Constitution of the United States says I can do and say what I want as long as I don't break the law. Perhaps you and I should uh, <clears throat> talk about the Lord. He can help you and save you from your sins and, and give you eternal life. Hogwash! You get this and get it straight. Keep out of my ward and stay away from the orphanage or you'll be sorry, you religious knucklehead. some bad news. Oh? What about, pal? Herman. Herman? Yeah. I overheard Mel Stitch telling Mr. Sunshine to stay out of his ward in the orphanage. Are you positive? Sure. I could hear Mel a country mile he was talking so loud. Well, I'll take care of Mel. He can't treat Herman like that. I'm afraid there's more than Mel in this. There is? What do you mean? Well, I heard Mel say that the people in his ward are complaining that Herman is pestering them about religion. See. What are you going to do? First, I'm going to talk to Mr. Sunshine. Then I'm going to do some investigating in the fourth ward. Good evening, Bill. Herman... I understand Mel Stitch gave you a bad time this morning. Oh, how did you find out? You have friends in this town, Herman. Oh, I didn't pay too much attention to what he said. I think somebody's made him do this. Put him up to it, you know. So I understand. Bill, you are a remarkable man. How did you find out about this uh, such short time? <laughs> There are folks in this town that don't like to see a good man get bullied by a man who thinks he's the dictator of the Fourth War. Oh, I don't think the committeeman meant what he said. 
I'm not going to worry about it. That remains to be seen. Mel can be mean when he wants to be, especially when he's trying to show off authority that he doesn't have. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a bully. Well, thanks for your kindness and thinking about my welfare, Bill, but I've faced this before, and while the Lord's still on his throne, everything will work out in the end. And the Lord will be on his throne for eternity. Mr. Sunshine. Oh, hello, Amy. This is a beautiful day for the Lord's work, isn't it? Every day's a beautiful day for you, isn't it? Yeah, because I'm doing the things for the Lord that he wants me to do. Look at the children. They laugh and play, and that makes my heart feel bored. That's because you bring them happiness, Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> Mr. Sunshine, indeed. Mrs. Connors. Yes, that's my name. Herman. Didn't Mr. Stitch tell you to stay away from the orphanage? Mrs. Connors, how dare you say such a thing? I'll say anything I wish. And you'd better change your tone of voice or you'll be out of a job. That's quite agreeable with me. Well, Please, ladies, I don't want you to fight over me. And to answer your question, Mrs. Connors, yes, Mr. Stitch did tell me to stay away from here, but... I will not, because I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, we'll see about this. Yes, indeed. The nerve of that woman, talking to you like that. Now, don't be alarmed, Amy. The Lord will take care of it in his own way when he's ready. Ladies, what's on your mind? Bertha and I were just discussing Herman, what's his name? I was telling her how he defied you right to my face. Dear me, Malvin, when she told me that, I came right over here with her. Sick as I am and hardly able to walk. So that religious crackpot defied me openly, huh? Well, I'll see about that. I certainly hope you do your duty, Melvin. Yes, what? Do you intend to do? I'm going to have a warrant sworn out for his arrest on the grounds that he's a public nuisance. Well, I hope Bill Jefferson's in. Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Bill, this is Jake. Oh, uh, hello, Jake. Uh, no, I don't need any aspirins today. You will after I tell you this. Hmm? I'm listening. Mel, Mrs. Connors, and Bertha Nibs are standing in front of the prescription counter talking over a plot to have Herman Weber pinched. What? That's right. They didn't see me compounding a prescription back here at the counter, and I heard most of it. And you'd better do something or I will, because I don't cotton to that sort of thing, no how. Mr. Sunshine's a very wonderful man, and I don't want to see him hurt by a few jealous people. I'll be over there on the double. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Town Bully, what's this all about? Well, it's none of your business. I'm making it my business, Mel. Well? There's one man in this town you don't scare, and that's me. You leave Mr. Sunshine alone, understand? <laughs> Mr. Sunshine? Don't you laugh at him. Land's sake, Bill Jefferson, calm down. I will, madam, if you and your cohorts leave that very fine Christian gentleman alone. Well, suppose you tell us a few things, if you're so fond of him. Where does he get his money to live on? He never does a lick of work. Why did he come to this town anyhow? We didn't ask him. That, my dear lady, is none of your business. Now, see here, Jefferson. Why don't you mind your own business and behave like a good boy? What do you care what happens to the old pest anyway? Get out of here before I lose my self-control. You better get while the getting's good, Mel. You're no match for that man. Now, go on, beat it. Before you get thrown out by me. We'll see about this. I'll get the sheriff and let him handle you tough guys. Now, ladies, I'd suggest that you get on your way and not Mel. make any more... Mel plowed right into Herman and knocked him down. I think he's hurt.
How do you feel now, Herman? Oh, fine. Except for my legs. Yes. Your legs. Why, I didn't know you wore artificial legs. Why didn't you mention it? Oh, there's no need to. I, I, I live a normal life. And Jake, I'm sorry I made such a scene. It's a rare day when I get so angry I turn white in the face. Forget it. You had a right to be angry. Every right. In fact, I was hoping you'd smash Mel right in his ornery face. Well, I wasn't that angry, Jake. Brother, I hope I'm not around to see that day. Well, let's get Mr. Sunshine into this wheelchair and take him back to the store, and I'll fix up his legs. Whoops, looks like Mel made good his threat. Here comes the sheriff with him and them two women. Yeah, so I noticed. Herman, here, give me your legs, and I'll have them in working order in a jiffy. Uh, yeah, sure, Jake, and thank you. I wouldn't like to be in the wheelchair any longer than necessary. All right, Sheriff, there he is faking his hurt by sitting in that wheelchair. Mel, is this the man you've been picking on? Mm. This man with the two artificial legs? Two artificial legs? <gasps> artificial yeah, legs? Yeah, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh. Bill should have knocked your block off. So long, Bill. See you around sometime. Okay, Cal. Thanks for stopping by. Mr. Sunshine, I... Oh. I dear... Dear me, I thought I had troubles... Can you forgive a Bill, quarrel? Bill, you should have knocked my block off, but good. Well, dear people, a few years ago, I had an accident on the railroad. They retired me, gave me my pension with a generous cash settlement for my injury. I never tell anybody about this. All I want to do is spread the Lord's sunshine wherever I go, because... Because he put sunshine in my heart. And that's the story of Mr. Sunshine. And as I said before, nobody calls him Herman anymore. Say, if you're over Naughty Pine Way, just ask for Mr. Sunshine. We'll point out the house where this servant of God lives, or you might see him walking down the street, spreading the Lord's sunshine. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! fellas and gals, Ranger Bill again, stepping in here for less than a minute to invite all of you out there to another half hour of adventure next week at this special spot on your radio dial. We've gathered a pile of stories for you with mystery and adventure and all kinds of excitement, and we don't want you to miss a single one. So next time, call up your friends or get together with them and join all of us rangers for a session of fighting forest fires, grappling with grizzly bears, or just plain trying to help somebody out. We're sure you'll enjoy the story, and you might just learn something that'll be of real help to you in later life. So, next week, be sure to listen.